Good morning, councillors. Uh, welcome to the licensing committee. I'm Councillor Clay, UD Chair of Licensing. I would like you to draw your attention to the following housekeeping information. If the continuous fire alarm sounds, please evacuate the room and the public gallery by the stairwells. Please do not attempt to use the lifts. Please assemble by the Queen Victoria statue in front of the civic offices. In order to comply with Guildhall Trust fire marshal regulations, anyone who has signed in at Guildhall reception desk must remember to sign up when leaving the building after today's meeting. With regards to live streaming, may I draw everyone's attention to the fact that this meeting will be live streamed from a camera at a fixed location at the back of the meeting room and the re recording will be on the Council's website. The camera will, c will mainly capture the backs of anyone making deputations but there will be some footage of them as they approach and leave the table where the microphones are located and of people entering or leaving the room whilst the meeting is in progress. Members of the press and public are also permitted to record the meeting on the understanding that it never disrupts the meeting nor records those stated explicitly that they do not wish to be recorded. Everyone, can everyone please use the microphones provided when they are speak, speaking? So, uh, agenda item number one. Oh yeah, introductions. They can do introductions. I do it every time. Uh, so I'd like to do introductions. I say I guess I'll start here and then go to my left. I'm, I'm Councillor Clay Udy and I'm Chair of Licensing. Good morning. My name is Ben Attrell. I'm a solicitor employed by the Council and I'll be advising the committee today. I'm Dave Ashmore, I'm the Cabinet Member for Environment and Climate Change. Uh, Gerald Lamb Jackson, Member of this Committee. Councillor George Fielding, Member of the Committee. Councillor Tom Coles, Member of the Committee. Councillor Scott Peter Harris, Vice Chair of the Committee. Uh, Leon Madden, Councillor Nelson Ward. Councillor Jason Fazakley, Member of the Committee. John Ferret, Independent Councillor Poolsgrove and a Member of the Committee. Hayley Trower, Air Quality Lead for Transport. John Smith, Democratic Services. Nikki Humphreys, Licensing Manager. Thank you. Any apologies for absence? I've heard from Councillor Steve Pitt, Benedict Swan and Linda Symes who will send their apologies today. Thank you. Anything else coming from members? Um, I've got a meeting at my daughter's school so I'll have to sashay away about 11.15. Can you not Shantae and stay? <laughs> um, could we, uh, any declarations of members' interests at all? Hello, Councillor Mason. Just wait for you to sit down. Could you just introduce yourself, please? Thank you. Councillor Lee Mason, Caution Ward. Thank you. Uh, once again, any declarations of members' interests at all? I'll take that as a no. no. Could we go through the minutes, please, of the meeting that happened on the 12th of April? Um, just so you know, I wasn't chair at that meeting, but I was in attendance as a licensing committee member. Uh, Ben. Yes, thank you, Chair. I did um, mention to you just before the meeting started, I had um, picked up a couple of points to raise. Um, on page four, the first, second, third, fourth paragraph down, um, which starts, it is essential that all the Council's discussions take account of climate change and air quality. The next sentence um, doesn't seem to make much sense. Uh, it reads, new cars are of better quality now, so there is no need to extend to the age minimum limit of 10 to 12 years. I'd recommend that taking out um, the second two, where it says to extend to, mm. and then taking out minimum, so that it reads, new cars are of better quality now, so there is no need to extend the age limit to 10 or 12 years, makes much more sense. Um, Hopefully that's relatively uncontroversial. Um, the final sentence of that page, uh, I would suggest to take out the if, so that it commences uh, the committee. And then on page five, um, three quarters of the way down the bullet points, there's one that starts, vehicle emissions are more important that its condition, I would suggest that should be than its condition. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Um, is there any other discrepancies with the license, uh, with the minutes at all? Uh, 
sorry, I, I don't want to sound like a sycophant, but Gerald Vernon Jackson was actually here, but he's not sure there's been in a minute, although he moved several things. Uh, where would you like to add these to the minutes? Well, just uh, present. Sorry. You would have picked that one up then. <laughs> They're just trying to, Joe, you're just trying to erase me from history, aren't you? Yeah. Sorry I wasn't here, but I'm sure if you say you're here, we'll amend yes, that. Yes, was, certainly. I can attest to that. Right. Is everyone in agreement with a slight adjustment to the minutes? Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Um, agenda item number four, the air quality local plans and implications for hackney carriage and private hire vehicles. I'm going to put you over to the licensing manager, Nikki, now, who will deliver a report for you all. Good morning, members. Um, the report before you today um, forms the uh, purposes in two parts. The first part of the report is to update you in relation to the air quality local plan and its implications for the licensed vehicles in our city, private hire and hackney carriage. Hayley has very kindly come along to the meeting today to give you that information. So whilst there is background information in the report, I'm probably going to be best to hand over to Hayley to, to give you the most updated information. Um, the second part of the report, members, is to seek your approval to bring a further report to you for consideration to set out a review of various options for the review of your current policy in relation to your statement of licensing policy for vehicle specifications and whether there is any uh, requirement or view by the committee to assimilate that within um, closer to the air quality plan. And the members, that the, the recommendations are, um, are before you in 2.1 of that report. So members, if, if I just update you where we are on the policy, you last reviewed, um, as the minutes have just shown, you, just, you did review your policy in relation to vehicle engine limits on 12th of April this year. Um, at that time, the committee were advised that we had a ministerial directive. We did have to produce an air quality plan and to ensure compliance with our legal limits for nitrogen dioxide. Notwithstanding the implications of that directive, the committee made the made amendments to its Hackney Carriage Private Hire Statement of Licensing Policy, and they're set out for you at paragraph 3.5 of the report. Um, which identified that all vehicles should be under four years of age on first licensing and that any vehicle can remain licensed provided the vehicle meets with the requirements of the pattern guidance as approved by the council. So in essence we have no upper age limit on the time that vehicles can stay on the roads currently. Um, as I said, Hayley's going to update you in terms of the clean air zone framework, but just to confirm that, that the current requirements of a Class B clean air zone are going to affect your, ta your taxis and your private hire vehicles when it comes into effect. And that will mean, um, if the vehicles do not meet the emission standards, that those vehicles will be subject to a daily charge. 3.9 of the report sets out to you that uh, on current analysis of our licensed vehicle fleet, 44% of those vehicles do not meet the Euro 6 standard, and that would be in relation to diesel. The majority of your fleets, both hackney carriage and private hire, are diesel. Um, the taxi trade and the private hire trade have been consulted on the requirements of the air quality plan and that was at a meeting and I'm sure there were several members who attended that meeting, the local um, consultative group meeting and the trade were updated on the implications for them. There has also been a working group meeting with the taxi trade um, and that was to look at the aspects of government funding if there were to be a change in terms of vehicle specifications and standards uh, what particular incentives um, can be um, applied for so members where we where we are today is that we're looking to seek your approval to look at proposed changes if you feel that there are changes needed to the policy. Um, 
to report back to you on the views of the Hackney Carriage and Private Hire Trades so you can see how the, the trades feel about the proposals and to look at incentives that we can get from the Clean Air Fund in order to ensure um, that the trade re receive as much financial support as they can if the option to approve would be to require emission standard approval. Thank you. Um, so to provide a bit of background to the air quality plan, I'm sure you've all heard this, but just for those who haven't, um, we, the Council have been issued with a ministerial direction to make improvements to air quality in the city in the shortest possible time. Um, the pollutant of particular concern is nitrogen dioxide. We know that that's from road traffic. Um, so we've commissioned um, a number of studies to consider which measures could be most effective in achieving the, the requirements of the ministerial direction. Um, and the air quality and transport modelling has shown that a charging clean air zone class B would be the most effective way to meet the legal requirements faced by the council. Um, so the clean air zone different levels are set by the national clean air zone framework. Um, within each level of clean air zone all the way from A to D, taxis and private hires feature in every class. Um, that's just the way the government has set it out. Um, so within our class B clean air zone taxis and private hires would be subject to a daily charge for travelling into and driving within um, the clean air zone if they were not classed as compliant vehicles. Um, compliant vehicles are those which are Euro 6 standard or newer, so um, that's kind of roughly 2016-ish, um, that's just as a guide, but there obviously are um, vehicles that are older than this that are still Euro 6, so it's Euro 6 standard for diesel, Euro 4 for petrol. Um, we have to submit our outline business case explaining how we're going to deliver this Class B clean air zone to DEFRA on the 31st of October. Um, there's a paper going to Cabinet on the 29th of October to formally sign off the OBC. Um, governments have made funding available for, for delivery of measures that um, improve air quality. That's their implementation fund. So that money will be used to deliver the charging clean air zone. Um, and a number of non-charging measures that we are also proposing. Um, there is another pot of funding that government have called the Clean Air Fund. Um, this fund is for mitigation measures, so those are measures that we can deliver um, to help groups most affected by the Clean Air Zone charge from being able to kind of adapt um, and change to compliant vehicle types. Um, so one of the things that Nikki's outlined is we've consulted with the trade about what kind of incentives would help them to change their vehicles across to compliant types. Um, <clears throat> so that could be um, financial incentives in the, in the form of loans or grants to switch across to compliant vehicles. Um, and that doesn't have to be electric, we don't have to go all the way to electric, so it just needs to be Euro 6, so it could still be a second-hand vehicle. Um, it's, it's not kind of that stringent, it's all about just getting to this Euro 6 standard. Um, but at the moment, the licensing is kind of at odds with that, so it's just bringing it closer together so that the licensing reflects the fact that if a taxi or private hire isn't Euro 6, it's going to be charged a fee for driving in the city. So it's just bringing everything together, really, with the, the bigger um, strategic objective of improving air quality in the city. Thank you. Um, uh, Councillor Vernon Jackson wanted to say something, and then uh, Councillor um, Vazakali. Um, I thought one of the interesting things out of the discussion we had, the informal meeting with the trade, was it seemed to be that with the private hire cars, who you seem to use ordinary cars, that when this, when the government imposes this in 2021 to come in, their feedback is that they'd almost all be driving compliant vehicles anyway, just because of, of the, the throughput, but that's different in the, the, the Hackney trade because people hold on to those vehicles for much longer. So I thought that the idea in terms of some funding is absolutely right, but I wondered if we need to extend where we're looking for for that funding to to, to other sources. I, I, was, I was just wondering whether, because it, the, the, uh, in terms of the recommendations, um, 
I didn't see anything here that specifically says that we'll go out for funding and for funding bids and whether we need to add a fourth recommendation to say that that's what we will do and, and I wouldn't limit it just to that clean air zone but I would look at any potential funding routes to be able to fund new compliant vehicles for the taxi trade um, yeah. or at least part fund it because there may be different there may be different funding pots we don't know about, including some of the council stuff, as well as external funding. So I'd, I'd quite like to have an additional bit in a, 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 a section D in the recommendations that says something like that a bid is worked up to investigate possible external and council funding to help fund the transition to new compliant taxes. Uh Thank you, Councillor Vernon Jackson. Um, it's been noted, and we'll have a full discussion about that in a moment. Councillor Fisakali wanted my attention as well. So, uh, Councillor Fisakali. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, three quick points, basically. Um, in regards to the working group that's been mentioned, which has, has already met, who's actually on that? That's the first question. I'm not sure who's going to answer it, presumably Nikki or somebody. Second one is um, about the Clean Air Fund. Obviously this report tells that we've got nearly 500 taxis that don't meet the Euro 6 standard. So is there any idea within the um, auspices of this Clean Air Fund how much money we're likely to get? I mean, are, are each of those taxis, should they t wish to take up uh, a loan or whatever it's going to be, are they going to be catered for all than that? Do we know? And thirdly, um, yes it's good to hear, or good, will be good at some point to hear the views of the trade. Um, and this report and the recommendations in it. Gerald said to add a fourth one. I think I can only see two recommendations, so I don't know what the other one is that you mentioned, Gerald. What's the third? Yeah, I've got. Okay. In that case, I'll withdraw that because I've obviously been a clot because I just missed that. Sorry. Uh, Nikki, would you like to answer those before I go on to Councillor Madden? I mean, maybe if I can f validate the working group query, and I'm sure I'm going to pass to Hayley, it's like a tag team here, about the other funding. Um, the working group arose out of the consultative group meeting that we had with the private hire and hackney trade, um, and representatives on that were officers from um, transport and from licensing and the trade itself. The invitation to that working group was extended not just to trade reps but to companies that have a number of lease vehicles and to all other operators in the city. And no, because we were focusing on obviously hackney carriage and private hire in terms of what assistance we could give to the taxi and private hire trade and what they wanted. So it was very much trying to get initial inaugural, I would say it was as a working group, to get some initial feedback in what kind of funding that the trade felt would best um, help them in terms of looking at compliance with Euro 6 emissions. I'll just pick up your point about the buses while while we're on it. Um, yeah, we we consult regularly with the bus companies anyway, so you might be aware we're already Euro, um, we're already retrofitting 105 buses in the city to make them Euro 6 compliant. Um, and through the Clean Air Fund, we will also be asking for additional funding to retrofit the rest of the buses in the city. So that's kind of covered off as a separate stream of this. Um, in terms of helping all of the taxis that are non-compliant. Um, we need to consider the fact that by 2021, when the clean air zone would become operational, we will see some natural replacement of the fleet anyway. So that kind of number of about 500 will significantly reduce by then. Um, but the way the clean air zone, um, clean air fund works is it's a competitive fund. Um, there is only £220 million pounds nationally. Um, it's all, all already fairly heavily subscribed um, because we're the third wave of local authorities required to do this work. Um, so we have to try and make the case that about the groups which are particularly badly impacted. So it's all about kind of the local economy, um, the different groups that work in the taxi and private hire trade um, and just making the case to government that we're kind of going to be very badly affected in Portsmouth by this. I'm back. So you mentioned that we're going to proceed with 100 odd buses that are going to be dealt with. So is there any cost to the bus operators in that? Well, this all comes from the fund. 
uh, and obviously I, if we've already made that agreement we're going ahead with buses and obviously buses are, are major companies in comparison maybe to individual taxi drivers in the city um, I would hope that basically we don't prioritise one over the other yeah, I think you're completely right. Um, as far as we're concerned, we will try and make the case for as much funding as we can. Um, but, yeah, at the end of the day, the decision's up to government about what they will and won't fund. Um, and that's, yeah, we will try and make the case. That's all we can do at this stage. Councillor Madden. Yeah, can I, sorry, can I just say, uh, uh, 310 talks about a meeting on the... On the <laughs> Paragraph 310 talks about a meeting on the 3rd of October. Can I apologise I wasn't there? It means absolutely nothing to me, I have to say, but it's probably due to this data protection stuff and not getting stuff from the civic office. But I do apologise for that because I, I, um, and I don't know if other members had uh, notification of it. I hope there was a good attendance in that. Uh, will the minutes there, I want to follow on from uh, uh, Councillor was point, will the minutes of that meeting show us the working group? Because I'd like to know who's on the working group. Because I feel a little bit bypassed sometimes when we're setting up working groups and, and all parts of the city involved and, and nobody sends out an invitation saying would you like to sit on this working group so I'd be interested to see who's on it. Clearly the trades on that but I'm just wondering uh, what officers and is the Director of Public Health been represented on that? I hope so because we complained at the last meeting that we didn't have anything at all uh, from the Director of Public Health so I do hope that, that they're on that. The, 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 something's going to some cabinet, isn't it, on the end of this month or next month or whatever somebody said. Oh, I forgot the dates on that. There's a few points. The recommend, I, actually, I think it's a very good paper. Um, I hope we're not getting Brexited on, on, on clean air because there's so much information going out. You know, you tend to think, for God's sake, not again. Um, but nevertheless, I do. Uh, you know, it is a very important issue uh, and we have to do what we what need to do locally. And I do think, actually, that the recommendations are quite good. I'd just like to uh, buff up one of them, if I may. Uh, I listened to the radio yesterday, and apparently Reading have introduced a, a clean air zone. Um, and, and, and the conditions for the taxi trade seemed a lot more stringent uh, the, than we're putting in. Um, and I think I, I, the clean air zone I've seen, which covers uh, quite a lot of Nelson Ward, and of course Dickens Ward as well. Um, we, 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 sorry, now I've lost with thread. We, the clean air zone will be introduced. We, we, we need to look, I think on, what I'd like to see under B is a further report looking at what the lo other local authorities are doing. Um, and indeed, if there's any plans to see what the government is doing for the future in relation to that. Because uh, I say, I think Reading, but, but, uh, you know, I'm not an expert on it, but much more stringent on that. We have also have to give the trade some time to adjust to this. When we look at 3.9, there are the number of cabs that wouldn't be compliant, the number of taxis that wouldn't be compliant. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fair lot. Obviously, on the, with, with, the, with some of the taxi drivers <laughs> been interviewed in Reading, you know, their, their, their life will never be the same again. They're going to have to give up the trade and all that sort, sort of thing, right? So that, that's clearly an initial response that we'll get from uh, some of the drivers. But nevertheless, I think it's very positive what the, the you know, the trade are looking at this because everybody knows the need to do something. So a time, a time for, for a time for them to adjust or whatever is important. And I don't know, it, I don't know if the government. I'm interested in government um, proposals for the future, seeing how things go. For instance, Southampton, I think, have decided not to do a clean air zone, haven't they? You know, uh, we're not that either brave or stupid. I don't know what the word is, but clearly um, something needs to be done, uh, particularly in relation to health matters as well for for our children and and, and our people here in Portsmouth. But I want to question, once it's in, and, and some, of the, some of the vehicles, whether buses or whatnot, or HTVs or taxis, are in fact not compliant, who pays for the policing of that? And how will it be policed? Are we going to have, we're not going to have a border down the Irish Sea or something like that, are we? We're not, we're not going to have, seriously, are we going to have, are we going to have, are we going to have uh, cameras all over the place? Um, 
uh, deciding whether people are uh, compliant or not. Because again, that's another cost to the country. And I think Gerald's right to talk about it. We have to look at the Ryan, getting it in and then beyond that. Um, so I do hope that, I would just recommend that in, 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 in B that we do look, the report will cover what all authorities are doing and see if there's anything that we can learn from them. But I do welcome this report, I have to say, and I think it's pretty good, and I'm and, and, and pretty good that the, the, the taxi traders always are taking a very positive position on this. I feel like you did ask quite a few questions there, and Nikki did pick, pick on on those. I think, again, it will be Hayley and I. But in terms of the working group, the working group was established quite quickly because of the Cabinet's deadline um, for the 31st of October. We wanted to get as much feedback from the trade so that could fall into the new future report and the business initial business case. So that was why it was at short notice. If members would like, because the group will obviously meet again and again to, to go through what incentives, if members would like an opportunity to be invited on that, then certainly we can we can manage that through that. And again, any other relevant um, council services that you feel should be represented on that meeting. So definitely we, we, we can do that. Um, in terms of mentioning Reading and all and other local authorities, in terms of coming back to you with options and the report, it was my intention to give you examples of what other local authorities were doing, so you have a measure to judge um, what would be best for the city. Um, we do envisage a lead-in time for taxis and private hire. We have had initial discussions with the trades about are there certain classes of vehicles such as wheelchair accessible because of their potential cost and expense? Should there be a longer lead-in time for them? That's something that will be filtered through to that option report that you will consider later. And in terms of how it will be policed, um, in, for private hire and taxis, the government have introduced regulations that local licensing authorities will have to send a list e at a minimum on a weekly basis to DEFRA um, of all of our current licensed private hire and hackney carriage vehicles, and that's across the country. So all councils um, will have to provide that information for a central database that any um, actions under clear air zones, that information will be made available to local authorities. So um, we have got that in place already. Um, we're just obviously waiting for advice from DEFRA as to when they want that information. Was there anything else I didn't cover? <laughs> um, so a bit more on about how it's policed. Um, there will be a series of automatic number plate recognition cameras. So as a vehicle drives into the zone, um, the camera will pick it up, read its number plate and establish where, whether it's a compliant or non-compliant vehicle by type and Euro standard. Um, that gets then sent to a central database that DEFRA will hold, where um, it's a central payment platform where drivers will have gone in to pay for access into the zone. Um, it will then tell us whether they've paid their charge or not, and then we will issue a PCN if they haven't. Um, so that's kind of how the system works. In terms of the costs, I know, um, Councillor Madden, you asked about how's, how's that going to be paid for. Um, as part of this outline business case we put to government, we have costed for the operation and maintenance of the clean air zone, and that funding will be provided by government. Um, the income, we obviously will get income from the, the, f the fines for driving within the clean air zone. That um, initially has to go to ongoing maintenance of the zone and then anything left can be spent by the local authority on schemes to bring forward the local transport plan, so kind of sustainable transport type things. So that's good that the government don't take it back from us. <laughs> um, you also asked a question about um, the, public, the Director for Public Health. So. Um, he actually is the chair of our air quality board. So um, the governance works in a way that we've got the board, we report to the board monthly, and then all these different working groups underneath, such as the things we've been doing with the taxis and the private hires, we feed back up into the board. So he's got oversight of everything that's been going on, um, and I believe he's coming to Cabinet to present the paper next week as well. So yeah, he's got some good oversight of, of what's going on. Um, I've got Councillor Ashmore. Did you have your hand up as well, Councillor Ferret? Okay, next. Thanks, Chair. Um, 
uh, just a couple of things. Um, we've mentioned about the uh, number of was it uh, diesel vehicles in 3.9 of the report um, that don't meet the Euro 6 standards 489. We've mentioned that that will come down over the next couple of years. Have we got any kind of ballpark figure bearing in mind the age of the vehicles and the, when they'll be replaced, what that figure will be and how many won't be compliant back then? I, can, I think we are at the moment, um, we have 52 hybrid vehicles um, in the fleet, which isn't a lot, but I have had assurances from various companies that have leased, that they lease cars to drivers, that they want to switch their fleets over to hybrids. Um, the difficulty we've got is at the moment, the current policy uh, where vehicles don't have to change, you know, there's no maximum age limit, we haven't got a policy that could see that transition quicker um, because if, if drivers want to keep them on, if vehicle operators want to keep them on, we can't prevent that. But I think certainly in turnover that the aspects of the trade where they do lease a lot of vehicles know that that's going to be if they don't make sure they're Euro 6 compliant, they're going to have heavy charges applied to them. So there is that incentive there. Thanks. And just one other thing. If I, oh, sorry, were you going to talk, so? Sorry, if you don't, don't mind. I was just going to add, I do have the numbers. I can share them with the, the group afterwards. That's no problem. I just don't know them off the top of my head. <laughs> that would be lovely. Thank yeah, you. We'll, what we'll do is we'll, we're including them within the Clean Air Fund, which will be published at the end of the month. So um, it'll be a public. Everyone will be able to see our calculations there. Excellent stuff. And I was going to come on to the Clean Air Fund. Um, as like has been mentioned, this is a government idea, the Clean Air Zone that's going to come in. Um, you know, we've been extensively modelled and the one that we've come up with is the one that's because the, the rules are it has to be one that reaches compliance in the shortest time you can't go beyond that otherwise you've got to pay for it yourself and with all the other complications that brings in so it's nice the government have said we've now got is it did you say 220 million pound pot and that's a national one that's not just for us and we have to bid for it is that just for authorities that have the ministerial directive put on them or are we competing with everyone so all right, yeah. um, yes, you're right. It's it's just those that have gone ministerial direction. So it's sixty something odd authorities that are able to bid into it. Because the only thing that worries me, sorry, just one more thing. Yeah, the only thing that worries me about it is we've asked um, the government for things for, you know, the, for for long term um, funding for things that improve our air quality long term. Things like the the funding to upgrade um, taxi fleets to electric vehicles, things like subsidising public transport fares. Um, we've, we've put all that in already, I think twice now, isn't it? Um, and we haven't, we've got short shrift from that. That's the only thing that worries me is they're now saying, well, you can have a little bit of this funding, but you've got to bid for it. It just worries me that it's not very consistent with the government saying you've got to clean your air, but then saying but you can only do it by this means. Thank you, Councillor Ashmore, for your point. Um, Councillor Ferret. Yeah, I suppose it's leading on from uh, from Councillor Ashmore's point about funding. Uh, it's been referenced uh, that other local authorities are introducing clean air zones. I don't know if Councillor Madden referred to Reading, said they had introduced it. Uh, are we able to ascertain what sort of uh, what sort of mitigation they are able to put in place for the private hire trade? Uh, because I think we clearly will need to set some expectations as to what is possible, but are we able to learn what sort of uh, level of compensation, if that's the correct term, they're able to put in place for the private hire trade? Um, yeah, I can share that with the group. Um, I've already commissioned our consultants Atkins to prepare a paper on that, so I can share that. That's fine. Members, any other questions at all? Um, Councillor Vernon Jackson, you may propose a fourth recommendation and we can hear that and maybe take a vote on it. Oh, it has to be seconded as well. Seconded. Okay, but you have to tell me what it is first before we can Shall I read it? it? Shall I read it out again? Uh, and, and I think it just picks up stuff in the report, but I just think it's, it's sensible to have something in the recommendations as well. Um, that a, a, and, and it might need re 
re-editing, but that a bid is worked up to in investigate possible external or council funding to help fund the transition to compliant taxes. Now, I think, I, I, it could, can, can my, I was particularly thinking of tax because, I, the, and, and I think you might be right, might need to be better to be inclusive, but <coughs> the feedback we had from the informal meeting was that the, the private hire trade would, would probably get there on their own steam um, before 2021 because that's, that's just their normal change of vehicles. Um, but it's, but it, if, if we, it should say vehicles as opposed to taxes, I'm happy. Um, but I think the, the main focus of what we do, because it's different with the Hackneys, because they tend to keep them for longer, that that's where the focus of the work will make, need to be done. <coughs> so if you want to change the word, last word from taxes to vehicles, I'm very happy. I think if we could look at all options Fine. for all the fleet, then um, I think we can keep it, if we can keep everybody. Fine. Okay. Ben, does that sound okay? Yes. Okay. Um, would anyone like to uh, say anything on that amendment at all before we vote on it? Happy to second it. Happy, okay, we got second it. Uh, just on Councillor Vernon Jackson's, t is it to add yours first and then we vote as a whole on all recommendations? Yes. So uh, would everyone like to add Councillor uh, Vernon Jackson's amendment to the recommendation? Could I just say, uh, uh, back to what Nicky said earlier on in relation to B, that we will be looking at all authorities. It's not in there, but that will be part of it. So I'll, ac I'll accept your word now. Okay. No, no, that's fine. <laughs> All in favour of Councillors Vernon Jackson to add a, a recommendation? Hands? All? Cool. Thank you. No one again. Uh, so I'd like to move the uh, recommendations put here today. Um, all in favour? Anyone against? Well, that uh, goes through. Thank you, Nikki, and uh, we'll be coming back to you pretty soon. I hopefully we'll organise another consultative group meeting soon because we have other issues in the in the taxi trade that we need to be discussing at the moment, which uh, people are aware of. Um, have a lovely day. Chair. Sure. Well. So, um, so the last consultative meeting, we said that we would, uh, and, and I asked for a report to come to a formal committee on the issue of potential new taxi ranks. Where is that in production and when will it appear? I'm looking at my um, trade rep at the back. I understand <laughs> that um, Rossley, the principal licensing officer, has made arrangements to have a tour of the city with Viv. Well, I understand. I will make sure that you get that call because that's, I think, is the next step that um, Mr. Young is going to take um, my offices around the city to identify potential locations where you think so, the said trade will be best served. So, so can I come back to my question? When will we get a report for us to make decisions on new taxi ranks? Will it be before the end of the month? <laughs> yeah. I have great confidence in Nikki's ability to move with significant speed. I th it, it really depends. I mean, I, I can look at if you would like a report by the end of the year. The end and of it, the year? Well, it's nearly November. <sighs> yeah. yeah, but Nikki won't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> My intentions were that, that out coming from what the trade had said, the taxi ranks they want, it would make more sense to liaise. <coughs> with our colleagues in transport and highways yeah, absolutely um because if if they're not agreeable so so when so you want to come back there by the end of the year yep is, if that's convenient to you so. lacial speed but i suppose we'll have to cope <laughs> there's a lot of taxi business going on at the moment <laughs> uh, councillor coles just wants to add something before i send you all away oh thank you chair um in the consultative group meeting there was a hell of a lot of talk about the library changes possible library changes is there any been any focus on those 
Um, there's certainly been discussions, and that's why I want to organise another consultative group, because I think we need to have a very long chat before um, we write any reports and bring it to committee. But I can assure you, I think 90% of the conversations I've had since I've been Chair of Licensing has been over LIFRA. So it's getting there. It's definitely getting there. Thank you. Have a lovely morning, everyone. Thank you.